Okay, so right now we will start with uh, with my session. Uh, so just to let you know, this session will be recorded and it will be posted on our uh, YouTube channel. So for those who missed it or just want to, to, to check it again, so you'll have that possibility. Okay, uh, let's go next, one second. Can you let me know if you can see the screen now? Yeah, you can. Awesome. Okay, so I was trying to get this uh, good comparison between record figure flow and apex figure flow, uh, sorry, apex figure. And I just like came up with idea. So triggers is getting so popular and so powerful. So maybe at some point of time, we actually don't need it or maybe we already don't, don't need uh, Apex Trigger anymore. So if it's, it's such a cool tool and we can, uh, sorry, there's one more attendee. Oh, sorry. Uh, so my topic is like record trigger flows with Apex Triggers and do we need both? So let's try to get question to uh, answer to our question. Uh, okay. So here's about me. So I'm a speaker today. So I will uh, share information about uh, this topic. So I, I was preparing it uh, for uh, for our community. It's the first time I'm showing it. So hope you will be uh, like happy with what I deliver and I will look forward for, for your feedback because I will try to share it more in our global community too. So happy to hear any feedback. So my name is Oli McKitten. If uh, if you haven't met me yet, so I'm uh, 11 times certified uh, architect. Uh, I work at Red Tech. I also community group leader in uh, in Lviv. So here it says a developer group leader, but uh, just last month we switched to architect, and uh, so I need to check change it here now. Uh, so I also founded Salesforce Saturday in Ukraine in Lviv. So we are not that active, unfortunately, this year, but uh, we definitely want to bring Salesforce Saturday back and uh, and have this chance for, uh, especially for people who just come into the, uh, to, to the community, to ecosystem of Salesforce, just to help them and uh, support on their way. And also for people who are very, uh, very strong, just to have opportunity to share and uh, learn something new. Also, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm helping with Salesforce Slack uh, for Ukraine and the channel with Ukraine. So we are sharing between leaders and uh, new opportunity to, to, to share good information with you. Uh, also, I used to be Salesforce MVP for uh, year 20 and 21. Uh, so if you, you don't know, it's uh, Salesforce uh, programs that, uh, that like, sh it's kind of like applying people from different communities who who is doing big contribution to the community and uh, it's kind of programmed to uh, award those people. Uh, here you can see my social account. So if you have any questions, you can reach out or just connect and, and stay in touch with me. Okay, so our small agenda for today. So we will definitely check what is flow. We will uh, talk about why do we like flow. Uh, we will uh, we will discuss what is record triggered flow and uh, I will just uh, have a list of my top benefits of, uh, of, of it. Also, we will talk about a bit of Apex trigger. So we will check what is that? Uh, why do we need it? Do we like it? And etc. Uh, so and we will have some comparison between, between these two uh, tools. I'll try to show you some uh, demo. So we'll just uh, walk through the flows a bit. And at the end, we will have some uh, Q&A session so if you have any questions. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So I would like to see how many people like flow. Can you just like put your hand up? I don't know. So I'll try to, to see on the camera how many people like flow. There are a bunch of, of hands over there. Yeah, I see it. I like flow too, personally. It's a great tool. And uh, for last years, it's getting much better, much better. And 
I hope uh, it's it will continue in that direction and we will like flow much more. But I remember the time like uh, a few years back when it was like visual flows. And I would say that it wouldn't be that many hands who would rise up that they like flow. Uh, but uh, nowadays it's much better and uh, I'm happy for that. Okay, I have one more question. Who likes Apex? Is there people who like Apex? Oh, I see it's also a lot. Uh, so you like both. Okay, good. So I, I, I was hoping that there will be like group will split two to two. Someone likes Flow, one likes Apex, but everybody likes uh, both technology. Okay, uh, so let's dive deep into this. I don't know like who is in a group. Maybe there's people who haven't heard about Flow. So just a few words, you understand it. So Flow actually, it's a, a declarative tool in Salesforce uh, that give possibility to create some automation. And it's actually point and click automation. So it's easy to configure. And it's also really nice visualized chart, like where you have everything connected. You see here uh, an example on, on a screenshot and uh, it helps to do some changes to data so it can be different types of flow it can be visual flow when you click on uh, through the screen where you, it interacts with this with user it can be some schedule flows that, that some per uh, some some um, some time it just uh, started it can be record triggered flow that we will discuss about today uh, but the idea is that it's a tool that easy to implement and it doesn't require a lot of effort from you. So uh, here is uh, my assumption why we like flow. So we just we just like say that it doesn't require developer skills. I would say uh, flow. It's when you develop flow, it's still you are a developer, but you just don't write the code. So you kind of doing it with point and click, but still you need to know some uh, some. You still have to know some skills how to. Uh, to do it in the right way, to have it the right approach, like uh, right algorithms. But definitely you don't need that very deep developer skills. You, know, you don't need to understand code. Uh, you don't need to understand OPA and others. Like you need to understand OPA, but uh, like not that deep, I would say. Uh, so it's really well structured, structured and you can visualize, you can understand especially for those who just started with, uh, with building different automations. This is a great way to start so you can understand how system works and you can do a lot of uh, powerful things syn there. Uh, so it's definitely easy, uh, easy to build and maintain. So it's like, as I mentioned, it's fast development that everybody, every client and uh, product owner, they will appreciate fast development. They will really like if all development will take like hours, not days and weeks and months for us, right? Uh, so that's why many times we just decide to go with flow because it's much faster and it doesn't require unit tests. So it's also a great thing. So you can uh, just quickly develop it and just deploy. Sometimes you can do it even in production. It's not good, but you can do it. Uh, unit test is not year Z, but personally, and I think it's gonna come and it would be the right decision because uh, flow sometimes they broke so many things and uh, unit test would be good. But but right now we like flow because they don't have unit test actually. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, less development effort for many features. So for example, like email sending, chat post, custom notification, you can do it just with a few clicks and you don't need to call any APIs. You don't need to uh, just like do a lot of uh, lines of code. So you can just add some pre-built action and that's it. So it's so easy. And we will we will try to do some, um, some examples of it on a demo. So I agree with me. Are you like this flow too or is there any more to add here? We'll just stop for a bit and if you have any questions or remarks or someone has more ideas. So is there like someone have more ideas on this Fabio like flow? Okay, I don't see hands in the room. I, I'm trying to look in, in this like small window where I see everyone. But okay, and if there's anyone that I cannot see, just like uh, please go on mute and tell me. 
but I don't see. Okay. Let's go to the next next slide. Uh, so this one is about uh, record triggers flow. It's actually one type of the flow, and that's the one that we will discuss today. So what is that? Uh, record trigger flow is auto launched flow that runs automatically with re when record is created, updated, deleted. So what does it mean? So it means that uh, to run the flow, you need to do some DML operation to your database. So you need to do some modification of your data, just like change uh, value on, on the record, or you need to create it, or for example, delete as we mentioned. And this actually triggers the flow. And then our flow can be called on those uh, type of events. So how does it work? Uh, so during that process, you can do some uh, some changes to data and also uh, it can be before or after. So for example, if you uh, create a record and based on some criteria, you want to I don't know, update that record. So users don't need to enter that information, but uh, just process automatically updated. So for example, you have, if you put some amount on opportunity, you want to mark it as its high priority one. And it will be just on before. So it's so easy because it will be still one time, uh, one time commit to database. Uh, but still, if you want to do some, some I don't know, uh, some complicated logic, for example, you create your record and then you want to create some related records. You want to send emails, you want to create related records. So it will be on after. So after record is created, you want to be sure that the record is created and you do some actions after that. And it can be done in, in this flow it's, and it's easy to develop. So uh, we have our record uh, variable that is global and it contains all data from the record that is coming to our flow. It doesn't mean if it's uh, before, after, or like create, update. So you have all data of that record and you can work with, with them, with all fields, I mean. Okay. Uh, let's go next. Uh, so let's see what is my list of benefits of record triggered flow. Uh, so first of all, mm, I would say that I really like flow on before. So it's very handy and quick to implement. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So it's really handy and quickly uh, because you just mm, can... Uh, create a flow, you can just specify what field you want to update and it just like take you minutes. You don't need to de de deploy something like, I mean, like uh, create um, different classes or you don't need to create unit tests. So it's super easy. Uh, second thing that I like in uh, record trigger flow is a scheduled pass. So it's really great thing that helps you on a trigger to create some some delayed action like uh, it's it's scheduled action but what i like here is that you can specify here from a minute like what time of that delayed action it will be so it can be like two minute delay like after a record is creation is created sorry in two minutes you send in email but you can do it also in weeks in a month uh, days and it's really cool because um, you can really uh, specify where, where to do this action. And not just like you, you do it asynchronously in future that you don't know when it will happen. So this is a good uh, benefit, I think. Um, also, I really like how they built a flow debugger. So right now it's so powerful, powerful because you can just do inline changes in your flow and you can just immediately see and debug um, data and see how it process. So it's super cool. You can just in a few point and clicks, see your um, your logic and see how what, what the data is coming and what steps and, and, and what lines uh, it, it's there. So also it's easy to test it under different users. So you don't need to log out or just log in under the users, uh, set up any, debug logs, you can just like change the user 
and you will run this user in debug mode of like flow debugger uh, under that user. So it's super cool. Uh, also, one more thing, it avoids uh, a recursion. So after on after update, uh, it will not be uh, in 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 the recursion, so flow automatically handle it on, on a background, and it will not be in a loop. So it's super cool, and uh, you don't need uh, spend time on creating some variables in the trigger. Just that, that will avoid this recursion, and you don't need to to worry about it. Flow will do this instead of you. Uh, one more thing that I like too is a version control. So in Flow, you have a whole list of your versions where you can come back to previous one. You can see who did the last change, when the last change was done. Uh, you can um, just keep everything in track and it's really handy. Sometimes you developing something and you're losing your previous version. You need to, uh, if you develop like Apex and triggers, you need to keep that versions in Git or somewhere else just uh, in case uh, something broken, you won't come back and you can just lose it. But here you have just everything in your single page. You have versions inside and you can just just return to any any working one. So that's really great benefit, I would say. Uh, one good thing is also outbound messages. Um, sometimes you need to integrate with uh, external systems and you need to do a call outs to external servers, servers. And most of the time when you hear about integration, you feel, oh, it's so difficult. Like how, how we do need to do it? Like so many questions, but uh, uh, we can do it with outbound message. And uh, sometimes it's limited, but still it's uh, good and easy. So we can do a calls from uh, flow to different uh, different systems uh, like outside of Salesforce right now. And it's uh, it's good, I don't say like benefit, but it's like good addition to the flows that we can do it without any uh, code and any development. So it's so, uh, so good to have that possibility. Any questions on this one? Do you like my list of benefits? Okay. I see thumbs up. Okay. Okay. There might be more, but it's like my list that I just decided like to, to show you. So um, if you, if you see, see there are like some more value and some more uh, that I missed. So just tell me at the end or stop me. But here is question. So as you see, flow is really nice and uh, I super like it. And uh, I'm happy to uh, to see the changes, but what do you think? Do we still need Apex Trigger or or at some time we're just going to deprecate it and we'll continue with the flow instead? Is there anyone who want to answer? Any ideas? Okay. I will answer it to you. So, but to answer it, we need first to find out what is Apex Trigger for, for those who doesn't know what is that, right? Uh, so first of all, Apex Trigger is a, an Apex script. So it's kind of similar, similar automation, but in code. So it runs on uh, different data manipulation. So same as I said for a flow, if you change, create, uh, delete uh, your data, you will call Apex Trigger so it can be same on before, on after events. Uh, it can be also actually undelete uh, and uh, on after delete or just before delete. So there are also some power in Apex triggers that Flow doesn't have. So here is one thing that uh, Apex more uh, flexible. Uh, so how does it work? So uh, so if you you use if your use case like when you perform your task and it can can be achieved with with point and click so most of the time we can achieve it in apex trigger so that's why we uh, go and do it in apex trigger and uh, it's mar much more powerful and it can support uh, almost, almost everything that apex can do like different uh, soql dml uh, i don't know, like um, 
API uh, from future and other things. So uh, it's same idea, but in code. And here is my list. Why do we like Apex? Uh, so first of all, I think that just developing of code is looks really cool. And uh, you feel so nice when you're writing code. People think you're so smart and uh, you're just like developer, you know. So I think like those who are developing code, they understand what I'm saying. So, and uh, one more thing that I really like in Apex that it's based on our web principles. So it's really gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of um, reusability and other things. Uh, so it's uh, it just like you have more uh, more varieties there. You have more choices. You have uh, different standard methods in place. You have a lot of pre-built frameworks. So you just less limited that in flow. That's why I like Apex a lot. Uh, you can do um, more uh, more solutions there, and uh, that's why you can achieve more things. Actually, mm. it's for sure easier to manipulate with data uh, on my mind. So we we have at least there like a set maps. We have wrapper class. I was talking about wrapper class in my previous uh, topic uh, in our community and uh, some conferences. So I, I hope you saw it. And also there's an article on Salesforce band that you can read about wrapper class. So it really helps us to play and manipulate with data much more efficiently in Apex. So that's why I think it's a good point uh, for, for Apex. Uh, but also sometimes like flow, flow and declarative tools uh, seems easy but sometimes it's not easy to implement them. And sometimes for you, it feels like easier to write a few lines of code and you're done. So you kind of like, uh, it feels that it's easier and faster for you to implement code. But sometimes it's just lack of expertise in flow and you just don't want to go to it. But sometimes it's really that flow is limited and you're trying to do some workarounds, you're trying to get um get information how to do that and at the end to just decide okay i will do it in a few minutes in apex instead so i don't want to waste a lot of time on this uh also i feel one more thing that's really important that it's more protected so i i know like i know if you 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 seen this but in my experience i saw a lot of times that people just do direct changes in production i and i really hate this because like when they do changes in production especially when I do develop, developing on my dev environment on the sandbox and I'm trying to deploy something, I, I have uh, two systems, uh, two orgs out of sync. And uh, then they say something is broken, but they just did changes on, on production. And Flow really give you opportunity to do that in production, like, like process builder and other things. So now we're talking about Flow only, but that's really good things that uh, Apex is more protected and you need to to deploy it, so that's why it takes some some time uh, to, to to implement this change. Okay, do you like my list of uh, uh, Apex or any ideas here? Okay, no hands, no questions. I don't know if they're in chat because I cannot see. But one second, please. I will see. No, there's no one joining us. Good. So let's talk a bit more about uh, what fits flow and what fits Apex actually. So here we have scene where sick work. So sick work, it means like something big, something like bigger, something not easy to achieve. And most of this type of work is not for flow. So it's good for Apex, but not good for Flow. For example, if we talk about, one second, someone else joining us. Uh, okay, so if we talk about, for example, high performance batch processing, so Flow is really bad on this. So we cannot process a lot of data in Flow and um, it's really limited. Uh, CPU time is uh, much bigger. 
uh, also we have limitations on elements set inside of the flow. I will show you a slide with flow limits later and you will see. Uh, so that's why with, uh, with like performance and issues and if you have a lot of data to update at the same time or just process it, so uh, you will better go with Apex and not consider a flow for this. And it will also be same for sophisticated implementation logic. If there a lot of dive deep and if there are so many conditions and uh, so many different ways that uh, your data should uh, fly through, uh, I would not consider flow for this and just go immediately to Apex trigger. And also, um, if you want to show some custom errors like custom validations or something like that, you will not be able to choose it in flow. Mm, so you will definitely need to go with, uh, with Apex for this. But what is good for flow? Like what is perfect for flow? And here you see some uh, record uh, record fill updates is good, especially if it's uh, related to this record because like on before you can use only changes to to the record that is that, that has started uh, the flow. On update you can uh, update current record or also related records, but but flows works perfect for this and it's easy to implement and uh performance is really good on this also it's good uh good uh approach for flow to use some specific delays so for example as i mentioned like flow can do um offset and like schedule pass for minutes so if you need something in exact time in exact uh, days minutes hours you can uh, you need to use flow because then you can you can specify there what is the delay uh, and it's easy to implement uh, also it's good that flow has a lot of pre-built actions and you can send emails some notification uh, with the flow and it's uh, saves a lot of time and it's easy to build so here is like ideas why why and where we need to use flow and apex okay uh, so here are some considerations before you uh, want to use before same before save uh, uh, record trigger flow so the one thing that uh, it can perform actions other than updating the triggering record field so what does it mean so if you want to uh, update some related records or do some some actions on before so when you just like save to database and before it's saved to database you want to change related records or do some other like uh, actions you cannot do that so it's limited on before it's really limited right now but still it's good to use it for uh for same record that, that started the process you want to update that record it works perfect you can do it uh also their elements are limited there so right now it's only supported assignment decision and loop with loop and get records uh so be aware of it please uh, and also um the view all data permission is really required to activate an auto launch flow that has a trigger. So uh, be aware of this one too. Um, and one more thing that I was um, kind of uh, really sad about that the order of uh, of on before trigger they are not uh, they are not guaranteed. So you are not sure like what order will be of those flows or on before per object. So uh, actually there is like Explorer where you can um, uh, put the order, but it doesn't work for <clears throat> before. Uh, so this is it. Uh, so this is some considerations for before save. Next slide will be about uh, flow limits. Uh, so most of them are quite uh, easy to understand and I'm sure you 
seen it or heard about it, but some of them are just good to point out and I will try to, to do that for you. Mm. Okay, so versions per flow, it's easy, it's 50. So it's just like good to know. Uh, the second line, it's about executed elements at run runtime per flow. So this one is quite a uh, big limitation. So for one interview of flow, we have only 2000 elements. And what does it mean? So if you run a flow, uh, you can have some elements inside. For example, it can be a decision, it can be, uh, it can be assignment, it can be a loop, it can be some other actions like send email and other thing. And all those elements in total shouldn't be less than 2000 per interview. So it's actually for record trigger flow, it's a uh, transaction. And for example, if you have your, uh, your flow where you have in, inside of it, you have a loop and inside of loop, you have some, some other elements. For example, you do some decision, you do some different passes inside of that loop. All of those loop, it's calculated every time for each uh, record and for each time it's uh, go through those loop. So, and in fact, if you have your small uh, flow, it might reach uh, this uh, this limit like up to a few hundred of records and it's really huge limitation so you can only update uh, well, not update but just run a uh, few hundred records per time and it's not uh, not good for for some uh, big data data volumes so just you to know this one uh, so here is about active flows per flow uh, flow type so uh, here also uh, totals number just like be sure that you know this um, also there's how many um, flow interviews can uh, be resumed per hour so you can do a pause for your flows you can schedule them and those interviews can be like 1000 per hour uh, at some specific time and also uh, it's uh, it's in total it's 20 20k for uh, combined uh, combined total of this automation that can start and resume record uh, field value so uh, as you see it's uh, all type of events like um, just uh, scheduled actions or uh, stopped action or uh, different um, triggers that uh, in uh, all together in, uh, in 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 this automations can be work, work from flow rules flows process builder so it's uh, this number for all together uh, okay so the next slide is about our uh, actually comparison so i did this small comparison for uh trigger and uh, Apex, uh, sorry, Apex trigger and record trigger flow. And here, as you see, uh, first thing that I already said about it. So flow require, not require, requ require developer skills and Apex trigger does require it. So flow is much faster and easier to deploy. Uh, Apex trigger is longer development and require unit test, but flow is more uh, consume more CPU time and uh, processing slower, uh, but I, Apex Trigger, it process much faster and consume less CPU limit. Uh, so that's why it has some issues on big data volumes with all of these limitations and Apex Dreaming process uh, e easier large uh, data. Uh, also, it uh, limited on data manipulation. So in flow, it's sometimes it's very difficult and complicated to uh, compare data to sort it in the right way. Uh, but in Apex, you can really play with your specific, uh, with your data types, with set maps, with wrapper classes and other things that uh, helps uh, to achieve uh, your, uh, yeah, your 
um, result. And it also has limits on elements that we just talked about that I would say it's a big limitation for a flow uh, and Apex trigger, trigger has also before and after delete that doesn't support by flow. Okay. Uh, so it's actually it. It's uh, more like theoretical part about uh, flows, about Apex trigger. Is there any questions on this? If no, we'll go to small demo. I will just show you quickly about some flow. I don't know how much time we still have because I see it's already 28. Okay, we started a bit earlier, so we have a couple more minutes. Uh, good, so let me quickly stop my sharing. Oh, sorry, no summary. I need to... Okay. Just tell me if you can see Salesforce. You can. Okay, good. So what I did, uh, actually we can, I just, we can quickly create some, maybe few small uh, flows. Uh, one second, please, which are, Let's, for example, deactivate this one. It's easy one, but let's create one more from scratch. So I'll quickly show you uh, before, uh, before a flow. So here you have different type of flows and we are focused today on record triggered flow. Uh, so you just create this one and uh, here you have object where it will, will run. So I will, that's in my demo on opportunity. And here we can decide when it will run. So we do it for created or updated. And I put condition for amount. If it uh, greater than 10K, we want to change some state. So put that it's changed. And we want to do it on, on a fast field update. So with that, it, it means that it will run this flow before commit to database. So we will, uh, we will create our record or just edit our record and system will like add few more changes to same record because it was saved. So it just goes in one DML operation. So you don't need to save your changes to database and then flow will add on top uh, automated changes because we can do it in after, but then it will be like two times the ML operation that we just want to avoid to, to save some uh, limits and just process it faster. So here we have our flow. And for example, we want to update triggering record here. You see, there's not that many elements and actions available here, but uh, let's, for example, do a really easy one. Set a priority. Okay. So we actually can set conditions here, but we put it on like on starting of our flow. Uh, so if we like grow our flow, we will rather use this section and, uh, and remove those conditions from just starting and kicking the flow. So I created a field, uh, priority on opportunity, and we just want to make it like there's values high, medium, and low. So we want to make it high priority when an opportunity is uh, is created or updated with uh, a ten thousand amount. So let's call it like this. Uh, set prior t for set priority for opportunity. 
we definitely want to activate this one. And let's go to and go through opportunity page. Mm -hmm. Okay, it will be demo. November 17. I don't know. Let's use this account. Close day. It's going to be this one. And let's put like 12,000. Stage perspective. Okay, so priority wasn't populated because there is is changed. So on creation, it doesn't work, but let's try to uh, update our value to uh, 11. So you see it automatically put here um, high. So if we remove this one, uh, where was this full? So if you remove this condition that it's changed, so it will also do it for uh, for our creation. So it's super easy and you see it's already like, just if you need some automation on before creation, you don't need to use trigger, you can just create a flow and, um, and it will be much uh, faster than to, to create and deploy triggers. So demo two. Uh, yeah, we will talk more about a few more use cases now, but let me quickly check if this one works as I mentioned. So on creation now it says hi. Okay, so uh, what more I want to show. So for example, if you have uh, your flow, they're gonna send some email. So for example, let's create new flow. It will be record triggered flow, but with some delay. So it will be opportunity again. It will be on record is updated. And then let's change that stage is stage equal to, for example, value proposition, yes. And we want to do it uh, on, not on before, but after. So when value was changed, you wanna do some related actions on top of it. So now we have this flow in place. Here we can actually do some scheduled pass. So you can do action immediately when it was, uh, done like the change was done to your record or you want to add scheduled pass and you can call it far mean delay email offer for example then update it and here we can decide like you as you see uh, before after like uh, we just want to do it uh, after and a few minutes after that. So let's do it uh, minutes after and here we can put five minutes. So then we have two uh, paths here. You see like one is immediately, one is delayed. So here we can add, for example, send email, but here you see there's more actions now than on before. So and let's do, for example, send email alert. And I pre-built one alert for uh, opportunity uh, value proposition. So we can just create send email prop, uh, email value proposition. And it will be for the record that kicked this process. So it will be just record ID. So basically that's it. So when, uh, when we have uh, change of our status is gonna send email uh, to to that uh, 
person. It's actually configured in our email alert. So if we go back and see email alert, uh, alert, email alert, so it will be value proposition here. And it will just send for related contact with uh, some email template that is just uh, like email with value proposition to to the contact that related to this opportunity. Uh, so yes, we can activate it and we can test. Uh, send proposition. Uh, okay, so there's an error. Okay, this is create updated. Only when the request is updated to meet this criteria. So this actually means so it will run every time when when record is changed, but value equals to this one. But we want to avoid this and we want to run it only when we change our stage to, to value proposition. So only send at that time. So let's try to save it now. Okay, it's active. No, it's not active. Let's click active. So now it's active. So when we change our uh, state the stage on opportunity, it will send email. So I'm not sure if you wanna uh, send email and, and check it, but I want to show you the, the idea how it works. And also I want to show you a debug. So we have really nice debug in a flow. So you can, test here uh, your different uh, different paths. So for example, we have two minute delay, we can skip start condition requirements. So we, we just want to test it. Here we also can, uh, can test on different records. And also it can be run under uh, different users as I mentioned before, but to do that, you need to uh, to activate it in your uh, setting. I haven't done this to this environment yet, so that's why it's not active. And here you can actually run your uh, debug and see all the information about uh, your record. Who triggered that flow? Also what record came there? So when it was started, that conditions. And it's really cool because you can, uh, you can track uh, your changes and just immediately here and just do updates and just uh, run the bug again. And it's even up, even you haven't saved it yet. So it's so easy and so cool. Uh, that's why I really like Flow. Uh, what else uh, to show? Uh, there's some also downsides of Flow that on before, as I mentioned, it's very limited on actions uh, also limits of those elements as 2000 and uh, what else also what i really uh, don't like about scheduled flow that when you do a scale flow you cannot get a value from your variables uh, because uh, the immediate immediate pass and the late pass is the separate transaction and you can refer to the variables from your flow uh, that just started the flow but then it will they will be just null and you couldn't really uh, get those values in uh, in scheduled in scheduled pass so that's uh, downsides of, of it uh, we are running off time so i just tried to show you some examples of of the flow uh, it would be also nice uh, maybe to show uh, trigger but uh, but i think we it's enough for 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 first time just to show uh, some uh, some flows and uh, as you understand trigger is more powerful and it will be um, just uh, give you possibility to do more uh, more complicated things uh, so here i have some summary for you and i would say that record triggered flow is a powerful tool and it's super cool and great addition to declarative automation um, but there's still a lot of challenges that are unable to achieve in flow, unfortunately. And uh, we have Apex triggers that can handle almost everything and com like compared to the flow. 
but that doesn't mean that we have to use Apex only. So in case, uh, in case where multiple tools are available, uh, it's really recommended to choose the tool that will allow you to implement and maintain the, the, this use case with the lowest cost and effort uh, for, for the future maintains. So it doesn't mean it should be a point and click first or a code first. So you need just to decide well, what, what will, will be the best for this uh, requirement and challenge. And also uh, need to um, think about your available resources. So if you have like developer team, maybe it makes sense just to write trigger because you have uh, good teams who will support in the future. But if you have a lot of admins or consultants and you are not sure that you will have uh, have developers in the future, so this means better to avoid Apex trigger. But uh, it's uh, it's always good to stick to one uh, to one approach because if you have too many automations, it's everywhere and it's difficult to keep or of execution and other things. So it's very unique and um, it's just good to decide this approach before you start developing uh, those automations. And yeah, this is my summary actually. I had somewhere one slide. Okay, sorry, I forgot about this slide. There was a slide where I had some comparison what is good for uh, for flow and trigger, but I think we did a good job already, so. Okay, so we are on Q&A part now. So how do you feel? Not tired, it was not, not too many uh, questions. I guess we are feeling good and it was interesting topic. So maybe let's now see if there, if there are any questions from the audience here. Is there any? I get a question from myself. So we know that Apex triggers, they process records by chance. So what about flows? Does one record come to flow or maybe several chunks or how do they split the records? Let's say we have uh... data. So you mean like triggers go uh, like per, per batches and you like sp like split that transaction, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So f actually, flow is bulkified, so it uh, it also can process big amount of data. But the one tricky thing, and it's actually a good question. So and one really good things to know is that flow they process one record per flow. So for example, if you have a uh, hundred of records, you only have access in flow of one record. You cannot really compare those records between each other. Uh, and it's really sometimes sad because you want to uh, walk through the whole data that it's coming in your transaction. And then you need to understand amount of like, amount of uh, one type of records compared to another type of records. And in Trigger, you can do it because you have access to your uh, all list. Like you have Trigger old, you have Trigger uh, new, and uh, you can have access to this list. And Flow, you just have access per one record. And the bulkify is do it on a background, but you cannot really uh, compare those records between them. So I would say it goes like one per Flow. Uh, is it answer your question, Andre? Yeah, yeah, thanks. That's answering my question. There one more question. <laughs> okay. I think Andre. Yeah, maybe you and we can uh, repeat question after that so we can hear it better, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you mind taking your mic? Sorry, Steve. Just wondering, uh, Dan, you mentioned that. Very important to uh, select the tool wisely, right? Based on how much time, efforts, and respect not only for, for concurrent tasks, but also for maintenance, for future extension, etc. I was wondering from your experience how often had to reveal flow with an apex because it was not enough. Well, actually, and is, possible, is it possible you can repeat it? I'm not sure if I get all question. I, I heard some parts of it, but it was, sorry, it was difficult to hear actually. Yeah, so at the end you mentioned that 
Yeah, should we should choose a flow in terms of support team, for example, so it's easier to support and Apex if there is no other solutions to uh, the current situation. And the main question was uh, how, in your experience, was there a situation when you should, when you, for example, used Apex before and then, no? Ah, okay. When you used flow before and then you, sh you had to exchange it, with, extend it with the Apex, for example. Yeah, so there's, uh, if I understand the question correctly, so if you mean like if we use flow and then we have to switch to Apex trigger or you want just to extend with some part of the flow from Apex? Just Is it one of those rebuild. to rebuild? Okay, yeah, I had actually, actually like one, one project that customer came and said, okay, we have a lot of triggers and we want to switch to process uh, builder so we can uh, configure it ourselves. But when we like look into those pros, uh, like Apex figures, they were so complicated and we really couldn't rebuild it. So I sh like showing different uh, different uh, example that I, I, I met before. So we, we, we were like explaining them that it's like not possible to rebuild all those Apex figures to, at the time it was process builder, all we suggested flow already, uh, but, because they were so complicated and so many uh, different conditions inside. It was so, uh, so big. Uh, it was for a lead object. And at the end, what we did, we just like re uh, rebuilt those flow, uh, not flow, Apex figures to use more uh, custom metadata types and different custom settings that just to be more configurable from, uh, from setup. So they can deactivate, they can uh, change some logic of it. So, the, so they had more influence on Apex figure from, from their, uh, from their setup and admin part. But you were saying if there were situation, if we change from flow to Apex and yes, sometimes it happens that uh, you start develop development with, with some small and you think, okay, it's like not a big request, so we can definitely do it with, with a flow. But then at some time you see, okay, we, we came to the point when flow is, uh, is not enough and we need to do it in trigger. And yes, sometimes it's uh, possible that you need to rebuild it. But also sometimes we just uh, suggest to do uh, invocable methods so you can have flow and then you just extend that flow with um, uh, with different invocable methods from Apex and you can still have some uh, combination of it. And also uh, you can have some piece in the flow, some piece in Apex, but then it key is, is it key? like you, you need to keep tracking of uh, of or of execution because uh, yeah it's sometimes it's really important to know which uh, piece runs first especially if you have dependency there is this answer your question yeah thanks a lot sure sure questions. you're welcome thank you uh, when we need let's say several uh, scheduled actions with different offsets. And uh, what will be better? Combine these several actions in one flow and have these tricks with shared variables or from the beginning uh, split these uh, different actions to different flow and for, for the same of them. Can you repeat, please? Maybe Andre or... Sorry. Maybe just closer to the microphone, I don't know. My question is about scheduled actions. When we have some mm -hmm. requirements to run some actions with different offsets, what will be better? Uh, combine this all the sections in one flow and have these tricks with variable sharing? Or it will be better to 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 build separate flow uh, for each action from the beginning and and maybe why maybe you have some tools. Yeah, I would say like if it uh, if it uh, related to one piece of functionality and you have uh, like different uh, like different schedule like different offset, I would say to have one main flow with all of them in one place. But if it's too big inside that I will go and use subflows 
to different uh, paths inside. So you can just uh, like clean the flow and it's not too like overwhelmed, not too big because it's also you need to, to, to keep your flow clean and nice because if it's like so many elements, if it's so big, it's difficult to understand for people who are looking into it. Even for yourself, after a few months, it will be difficult to read and understand it. So, but the main thing is that I will keep it in one place, but then use subflows to like spread, separate, like and move out some piece of it. Does it make sense? Recording in progress. It was in my get hack of IT. Just for that, uh, was too many software drivers in the and store IT in the last. Okay, so if we uh, say that the flow accepts one record per time, and for example, we are inserting 100 records at a time, and inside of the flow, we have a get record element. Uh, will it fail or will it execute successfully? So you mean we saved 100, 100 records and we want to get 100 of records and do some data manipulation with it and if it's fail or not? Yes? 100, 200 of queries. Like, do uh, we have a GML exception? Uh, yeah, so I, I, to be honest, I'm not sure about that, but uh, but I think... Like if you do a get records and you want to limit it by hundred or something like that, if I understand, uh, so we can do it. We can limit it, uh, but definitely you need to do a query like 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 one together. So you need to get them in one place. So avoid it to go in a loop or something like that. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, I'm not sure about exceptions because uh, there's only standard exceptions available in flow and it will throw you like some standard error uh, but for this number of records i'm i'm not sure if it's gonna fail so my feeling that it will not fail but i cannot predict i i'm not i'm not sure sorry okay thanks uh, any more questions there is one there is one question online also uh, what is better sorry if you are in one room just don't go on mute one figure for probably for many small triggers uh, so the question is what is better one trigger per object or many trigger per object? Many small. So many smaller flows per object. So one per object or many small per different. So actually Salesforce, they changed their uh, best practices on this. So before it was that uh, it would be better to have one flow per object, but right now it uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that you need to have only one flow per object. Uh, they have their order execution where you can configure like what flow start first and this means that you can have as many as you wish on one object but you need really to think about setting order of them and also i would suggest i learned this from cpq to keep numbers like not one two three four five but to keep numbers like 10 20 30 40 50 that uh, you just have uh, like a uh, step by 10 for each uh, order because if you decide at some point of time that you need to put something in the middle you can just create like 15 order number 15 and you don't need to move all of them because if you have for example uh, 10 flows and you decide you want to have it on a number three then you need to change order for all of those seven from like from three to four from four to five so I would suggest like to keep numbers like 10, 20, 30, and then just you can uh, put order in, 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 the, in the middle. But to answer your question, it's uh, you can have many flows on, on one object now. Any more questions? Um, 
Yeah, thanks a lot for sharing. Um, okay, uh, yeah. thank you. I just, yeah, I just, uh, if there's no questions uh, I have here to, ah, uh, sorry, Bill, you had a question. Go ahead, please. Yes, thank you, Oleg. That was a really good presentation. Um, I had a question, and you know, and maybe for people like me who aren't so familiar with flow, um, but, you know, what would be the sort of the system or the org? Or any, or any system or org limitations that might influence your decision between choosing uh, an apex trigger or a flow solution, you know, for things like, you know, performance or. So you mean if there's any uh, like performance issues before you, s like that you need to consider before you select a uh, solution, yes? Yeah. Yeah, so performance is always very better with a code to be honest so but it also depends on quality of that code so if quality is good and you keep all bulkify you keep good um, data manipulation and other things you not overuse different variables and other things so definitely performance is better in code and from what i read uh, like from those articles and from some sort of documentations they try to uh, to increase uh, performance of flow but uh, as you understand it's visual and it's so difficult to to get that uh, performance in in good uh, good 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 stay state and way so uh, performance i i think that pro performance will be always better on code I, I i i i don't believe they will achieve this but i don't know it's just my assumption uh so i would say if if you worry about performance then yes consider code uh, but it also like for different environments, you know, for some requests, for some uh, solutions, it some somewhere you need performance, somewhere you don't need performance, right? So it doesn't mean that you need performance for whole approach, for whole org. So sometimes you can use like a future, you can use a schedule and move it out from transaction to keep it work faster. And if there's no dependency on this and you can just do it in asynchronous action, then you can always control your perform performance with this. But there's no uh, right question. So it's always a um, unique approach. Uh, but you need to know about all of this just to do the right decision. And uh, it's just good to learn and analyze it before you're doing and developing things. So yeah, tricky question, but hope I answered how I could. Jaku, yeah. Okay. No, sorry, yeah, Jaku. Budlaska. Okay, so every every time you join us, will you, your Ukraine is getting better and better. So when you come to Lviv, you will just be like almost fully fluent in Ukrainian. So well done. Da. Dobre večer, muži Ukrajini. Yeah. You just need also learn about uh, Russian warship when you come to V <laughs> and like other things, and then you will be very well, warm welcomed. So, so thank you for a question and for being with us. Okay, if there's no questions, I will go to next slide. We a bit over time. It seems to be I use so many time, like many like minutes for 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 this presentation. But I did, I hope you like it. Here are a few uh, links. Actually, it's only two. Uh, I really like the first one. It's uh, it's a big article uh, from architect, uh, from Salesforce architects, and uh, it's really great uh, explanation on what suits flow, what suits code with low uh, low code with the pro code approach. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested to learn more about uh, flow, like record trigger flow and uh, apex triggers, I would definitely suggest to read this one. And yeah, Trailhead is always good. So you can always find there more information about triggers, record trigger flows. So I added here a link to record trigger flows. Okay. And uh, yeah, of course, I want to thank you all because uh, without your attendance, I wouldn't have to prepare this uh, slides and presentation. I wouldn't spend those hours just to learn. And it was good motivation for me just to spend the last few nights to get it done and uh, to have this presentation for you all. So thank you for uh, joining our community, for being today with us. Uh, I appreciate everyone here and uh, yeah, hope you like it. I look forward for your feedback 
and uh, just reach out if you have some um, some ideas to this presentation because I will also uh, talk about this one in some conferences. So it's good just just to make it always better. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so uh, right now we've actually had to have a breakfast, not breakfast, but break in uh, like like 15 minutes ago. Let's do it now. I plan to have uh, a game. I don't know how you tire it or not, uh, but uh, the idea was just to have uh, like two groups of people, those who like Flow and who likes Apex, and just to com compete a bit who have the best ideas why, why it's better.